the AP Top 25 was released and it same top 10 as the coaches poll, but in different order. Uh, Alabama is number one here, less less first place votes than in the coaches poll. They got 47 of them. Oklahoma, number two, with six first place votes. Clemson, number three, with six. Ohio State, number with one. Georgia, number with three. And then you've got A&M at six. Iowa State, all the way up at seven. Cincinnati at eight. Notre Dame, nine. North Carolina, ten. Cincinnati at eight is the highest group of five ranking preseason ever. Houston, back when Tom Herman was there at number 15, was the highest prior to this. Now, this kind of sets it up where Cincinnati, who has got a game at number nine, Notre Dame, at number 17, Indiana, and then you've got UCF, who's one of these that is, that's receiving votes. If, if Cincinnati runs the table, they are in a position, as much as we like to say that the preseason poll does not matter, it does. Everybody kind of bases their polls based on what this was beforehand. And now, it's not as prevalent these days as it used to be. Right. But Cincinnati has themselves set up to where if they go undefeated, they got a real, real shot at the playoffs based yeah, on this being, initial. Yeah, Them being ranked in the top 10 preseason is something I never thought I'd see. I was saying. I just never, I just never thought that they would give them the, the credit that they do. Uh, I wonder, is this a world where the AP, the writers, are seeing the game for how it is and not how those who want to dictate how it's going uh, does? Yeah, I, I'm curious what the difference is going to be. I I want to see what they end up doing with them if Indiana and Notre Dame aren't great, right? So if Indiana ends up going six and six and Notre Dame is an eight and four team, but you got you know two wins on the road against Power Five teams, that should count for something. And I we both know that the AAC is a strong conference, so. I would expect this to to maintain all season. It's not like they're going to drop them. But the biggest thing is, of course, Cincinnati has to win out. They have to go undefeated for that to even be a possibility. Yeah, no. If they want to stay a top-10 team, they have to win out. Uh, I, I roll my eyes a little because it, it, it would frustrate me if Notre Dame doesn't do their job and, and Indiana doesn't do their job. Somehow that's going to negate what we think of Cincinnati when I'm not, hear me, I'm not saying Cincinnati is Clemson. But we don't do that to Clemson, okay? True. We assume Clemson is a top three or four team, and they steamroll a bunch of nobodies every year, and then we say they're still a three, a top four team. Like, we don't even debate it. So, I'm not saying they got to be a top four team, but if we know today, or we think today, they're a top ten team, if they steamroll everybody, if they run through their schedule, and their schedule happens to be bad when we think it was good beforehand, that's not their fault, and you can't knock – I'm not saying give them a playoff spot. I'm saying you can't knock them out of the top ten because of that. You can't have somebody jump them I agree. because of that because you haven't done it in the past. Precedent has to matter. Consistency has to be important. Yes. I do want to prepare you for this. I was actually looking at this earlier today. Boston College got five votes. NC State got 14 votes. And if you go and look at Clemson's schedule, uh, Clemson – has got well, no, no. This year they play Georgia. That throws everything that we normally say about them out the window. Right, but they if they lose to Georgia, typically if it was a G five team, that would just knock them out. Right. That's right. However, in this situation, they play NC State in Week Four, and they play Boston College in Week Five. And NC State, this is who NC State opens up with. Okay, hold on, I'm pulling up the schedules as we speak. NC State. Opens with South Florida, Mississippi State, and Furman. In week four, when they play Clemson, if they beat Mississippi State, yeah. this team will be three, and I guarantee they will be ranked in the back half of the top 25. Boston okay. College, same situation here. Boston College opens with Colgate. They play UMass. They play Temple. They host Missouri, and then they play Clemson. If they get by Missouri, this will be a top 25 team, and... They will credit them with this, regardless of how these two teams finish. I know that. I know that, Gary. I, I do this every year. Every year they inflate, they overinflate these ACC teams that Clemson has on the schedule every year, just just to say Clemson beat top twenty five teams. They do it all the time. 
It's it's just complete and utter manipulation of the schedule. Yes. Uh, of, the, of the rankings. It's yes. just a total. It's a total. And they're able to do it because week three rankings don't matter. Week four rankings don't matter. Nobody in the pantheon of college football will ever look back and say, oh, well, it didn't matter that we ranked Boston College, even though we know they're not a top 25 team. So it doesn't hurt anything to rank them. Yes, it does, because we know why you're doing it. Yes. Yes, 100%. Well, well, people who are paying attention know why you're doing it. Most people just go through life just, you know, with blinders on, just thinking everything's great and nobody's And don't understand how the – they don't know how the sausage is made. That's the way it goes. And, I, and some people prefer that. I understand that. But that's not what we do on this show. The underrated teams, the overrated teams, going through just off the cuff – Underrated teams, I really like Utah. At Arizona State at 25, I would have had underrated, but I have no idea what to expect from this team. <laughs> so I yeah, I, my question is, is do you have them rated? See, this is it. If it's a talent standpoint, Arizona is way Arizona underrated. Arizona State's way up there, yeah. Arizona State's way, way underrated, yeah. So. Utah at twenty four, I do think it's underrated. At Coastal in Louisiana at twenty one and or sorry twenty two and twenty three, probably underrated. Iowa at eighteen, I think is underrated. Uh, Oregon, you know, sitting at eleven, I think they're right where they should be. Wisconsin, I want to see exactly what this team is going to be. Florida at thirteen, maybe overrated. I I'm curious to see what they're going to look like. Miami could be underrated at fourteen. Uh, as far as the top ten goes. I, you know, I went through a couple of them. Iowa State at seven might be a touch high, but there's a lot of love for Matt Campbell. And they got a bunch of guys returning. They got four All-American first-teamers this year. That is more than anybody, more than any other team, which is insane to me. But that's the way it goes. You got any overrated, underrated that you want to toss out here? The, I mean, you know, I'm with you on the lower half. I, I, I think Louisiana and Coastal uh, should be should be higher than some of these other teams. All the other teams they've got above them are all big boy college football brands. Yeah, but they haven't been they haven't been great and they haven't performed the way those two teams have over the last couple of years. So, Indiana you know, I, at seventeen seemed uh, a little bit high. Uh, yeah, I feel like it was, I, a reward. and I love Tom Allen. Yeah, and I, and I hope it. Listen, I'd love for them to finish that way. I don't know that I could put them there. And the overrated team, I think this team has a chance to be really good. Okay, hear me when I say I'm not shitting on this team. I just I don't I'm not ready to give North Carolina just the nod of being a top ten team. They haven't shown anything to prove that they can beat a top ten team. Well, That's if you true. can't beat top ten teams, then you can't be a top ten team. Okay, so giving them that nod of top ten, I just think is way premature. Way well, let's premature. say hey, let's let's talk about this then. Uh, I did write this down every year for. It, Two plus decades, other than 2019, we've had a team go from top 10 to unranked and a team that went from unranked to top 10. My my top 10 to unranked is, I could see any of them doing it. Iowa State won some close ball games last year. They went four and two in one score games. I, I think Iowa State's going to be really good. I could totally see them dropping completely out of the rankings because you remember it was just two seasons ago. It was 2019 where they went seven and five. Now they ended up like back half of the top 25, but it, Iowa State loses a couple of field goal games. You know they end up going seven and five. I, I could totally see them dropping out. Notre Dame has got a hellacious schedule. They re, they replace a bunch of guys on that offensive line. I do think Notre Dame is going to be really really good. Obviously they've built that program to where it can withstand stuff like this, but that schedule. Kind of difficult. And it's difficult every year, and I get that. But that's that's one that I worry about. And then, of course, North Carolina. If the, the skill players that come in do not produce at the same level, and that defense, even though everybody's been talking them up, I've, I've got a lot of faith in them. If, if the defense doesn't step up and the skill players don't produce, that's a team that could absolutely drop all the way out of the rankings, even though they're ranked number 10 here. You, you feel the same on, on those, or do you have a different one? No, I've got some different ones, but but I want to talk to you about that. How many games do those teams have to lose to fall out? That's the that's the question that you got to get to. I think North Carolina would have to be seven and five to drop out. I think Iowa State would have to be seven so and five North, to drop out. North Carolina is not dropping. They're not losing five games. Their schedule is just way too damn easy. The ACC outside of you know my they don't have to play Clemson. So outside of Miami, 
they're not going to play another team that's close to them in the rankings the whole year, right? All right, hold on, hold on. Say they lose at Virginia Tech week one. That wouldn't be crazy, right? No. All right, so you lose that one. Then you got Georgia State, you got Virginia, and you got Georgia Tech. Ought to be able to win those, I would think. Okay. Now, Virginia, that could also sneak up on you because, obviously, Bronco gets one of those kind of wins every year. But Listen, either way, if you're we'll, a top-ten team, you can't beat Virginia, then you're not a top-ten exactly. team. Exactly. You, you run into Duke altogether. You run into Duke. And then you've got Florida State, who Mac Brown still, to this day, has not beaten. All right, so let's say they lose to Florida State. Let's say Norvell's got that thing rolling, all yep. right? So you've you got they Virginia got Tech. Losses. you got Virginia Tech, and you got Florida State. Then you have a disaster season for this team, by the way. Yes, 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 absolutely. Then you've got Miami and at Notre Dame back to back. Okay, you could lose those two. Then you've got that, Wake. That, that's that's you're talking the wheels have come off. Now you've lost yes. three in a row. Yeah, well, it, at that, yeah, that'd be three in a row. It, it, but say say you win one out of the three, right? Okay. To end the season, you still got Wake Forest, who is that, super plucky. That, we both like Dave Clawson. You got at Pittsburgh. They're not close to a top ten team if we're talking about picking. Agreed. Hard Wake Forest. Agreed. But this is a team that lost to Florida State last season and had better weapons. Had you know, I, and so either way, at Pittsburgh, I, Wake Forest. There's no way and they're at, getting the five losses. And at this NC State, not getting the five losses. So, I think I think I, I think four losses would probably knock them out. By the way, I think five is obscene. The reason I say that is because there's a world where. The big boys have never allowed Cincinnati or a team like this in to the top 10. Since they have, if they lose the two big road games to Indiana and Notre Dame, I could see just those two losses taking them completely out. I wouldn't say completely out of the rankings. I, it wouldn't, you wouldn't surprise me if the voters that do this wouldn't say, nope, we, we had you a top 10 team and you let us down. We had you ranked over both these teams. You were betting favorites over them. You lost both of them, you're never getting in again, and now we're dropping you out. I think there's punitive punishment that could be had. I, that, possibly, I, I will look at it this way. If Indiana and Notre Dame are good and you lose both of those on the road, you come back, you beat Temple, you're sitting at 3-2. and two. I could see you in the back half of the top 25 at that point, and then you have to play UCF on October 16th. But no, even if you beat UCF and those are your only two losses, I could see by the end of the season – them wanting to rank some of these other teams in over them because yeah okay when they're when they're trying to figure out who they're going to let in this thing they're going to be will, in their brain they're going to want to punish a team that they all kind of had faith in and let them down my my pick for the team that is not going to be ranked here see this is the problem of how many losses because it's really hard to get a three-loss team into the top 25, or a four-loss team definitely not in the top 25, right? Right. Is there any world where any of these big SEC schools cannibalize themselves and one of them ends up with three losses and doesn't make the top 25? Uh, I don't – I think if, if A&M – Not a specific team, but if Georgia ends up with three losses, would they be still ranked or not? Yeah, they'll still be ranked. Okay. Right. They, they I can't would, see they would any of these ranked. teams losing four games because their but losses that, would it, like Georgia's losses would be Florida on, probably. Nope, nope. nope. You got to stop doing that, man. Because just two damn years ago, this team came off a, a, a half from winning the playoffs, and then they lose to damn South Carolina at home in the hedges. So you're just ch- you just think their losses would be normal big losses, right? You just assume that. You don't know that Kentucky won't come in there and kick the shit out of them. That's true, but that Kirby season... Kirby Smart's done it every year. That season, that South Carolina loss was the only loss that they had before the SEC championship game. Are I you mean, justifying it? No, so I'm not justifying it. you're making that okay? No, I'm not justifying it. I'm you're saying making it okay, to let, but you're, <laughs> you're working under the premise that you know what their losses can be because you don't see any of these other teams upsetting them. But right, they so, get upset every year by somebody. Yeah, I mean they yes, yes, you're not you're not wrong about that. Show me a year where they haven't. Well, I mean last year they didn't get upset by anybody. They they lost to Alabama, they lost to Florida. Well, I guess the Florida game they weren't the dog. Right? Uh, they well they were they were a favorite. I think they were a favorite by 3 points, right? It was like 2 by That's not, that's by not a big kickoff. upset. Yeah, it's not a big upset. But but I think the the smart betters out there <laughs> like us, we both picked Florida to win that game. I Looking at it this year, like if you lose to Clemson, is that anything to to hang your head about? 
I don't oh, think so. You're, all right, so let's say they lose to Clemson, and then they lose to Florida, okay? And then let's okay. say they lose to Auburn, all right? Okay. They're still ranked in the top 25, right? Yeah, I think so. And then let's just say they get upset by one of these wild-ass teams. Now they're not. You lose to Missouri or Tennessee or Kentucky or Arkansas. Anybody else on the whatever. schedule, Gary. Yeah. Anyone else on the schedule. Yeah, I, th- I think eight and four. That's left on the schedule. I think eight and four, they, they will not be ranked. receiving votes, but they'll be towards the not, not ranked. You don't think so? Not ranked. You can't have a four loss team be ranked. There's going to be too many one, two, and three loss teams out there. You can't do it. Uh, you might be right about that. You might be here. Let, let me look at uh, let me look at last season. And this just isn't look. It could be a And M. It 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 could be your beloved Alabama Roll Tide. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, if Florida had four losses at the end of last season, they were still top ten team at the end of the year. That's so, insane. yeah, but hang on now, no, they but they didn't have the fourth loss until after a bowl game. Uh, true, but they that but they, they still went eight and four overall. I mean, it was all right. So looking at at twenty nineteen, let's go back to twenty nineteen. Looking at the final rankings, Texas was in at eight and five. Uh, Auburn at nine and four was number fourteen. Wisconsin at ten and four was number eleven. Yeah, I mean they. It, it would just be Michigan at nine and four was uh, number eighteen. So yeah, there's there's several. There there was yeah there was several four loss teams in there, and then Texas with the fifth loss. So who knows? Who freaking knows? Uh, Virginia in the coaches poll was nine and five, and they were ranked number twenty five. So yeah, there's there's ways that you can that you could still be ranked, but I don't I know. I just anyway, that, uh, that was my thought process. Is is how. The question is not. Well, wait, let's let's look at it from the opposite side. What about those that are unranked making it to the top ten? Because there's always been one. Yeah, I I like TCU here yep. because I think that Iowa State, as good as they are, the talent discrepancy between those two is not crazy. Yep, I agree. And if if it's Iowa State and they've always had Texas's number, so then all you got to do is play a close game with Oklahoma, and. I mean, you're sitting there, one loss, two losses. You might be, if your only two losses are to Oklahoma, you could absolutely be a top 10 team. I was looking at this from a regular season perspective. I was not looking at this from the end of the bowls and everything perspective. Oh, So let's just say at the end of the regular season. Because at the regular season, if you're one loss away, because you can't predict a championship game, and now now you don't know who they're going to match up with in a bowl game, and that's just insane. Like that, and, And your bowl matchup shouldn't matter. Because if it's not a playoff, then it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you lose that game or yeah. not. Liberty could be interesting. Liber- I, Liberty was my guess. Liberty would have been my pick, or Ole Miss, one of those two. Yeah, Ole Miss, like they've got the offense, dude. I want to see what the defense does this year. I mean, they they brought in some some good recruits on that defensive line. And, you know, they got some guys to replace in the uh, in the middle of the front seven. So we'll we'll see what Ole Miss ends up doing. I I do think that they can score enough points against everybody on their schedule to be able to win. A lot of games. If you've got an Ole Miss team that gets a massive upset but finishes the season like nine and three, I think they could still be a top ten team. I don't know about top ten, but but there's a world where this team could be ten and two. I mean, I think they'd have to it, everything would have to go right for them. Yeah, Liberty at Liberty could be a lot of fun. I just worry about the schedule. Like they their their stuff is is weird. It, it, their their schedule is just it, it it's not super strong. They need and they, they need play the Syracuse good teams and, that they play. They need the good teams that they play to be. Yeah, yeah, they really do. They really, really do. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.